So, can I ask everyone to grab a seat? Well, wait, wait a minute, we've got to tell them where, where they want to sit. <laughs> Sorry? We've got to tell them, for each, each group here. Yeah. Could we have the... Yeah. Could, could we have the slide up? To randomly. No, you, want them, you want them to choose. Yeah. All right, you can be random. I'm prepared to go with the flow. This is random. <laughs> <laughs> Are you feeling uh, you can handle a bit of uh, randomness? Or, or would, do you like free choice? Come on, come so you can see we've uh, rearranged group. the furniture here a little bit. <laughs> uh, you're in f there's five groups, and there will be five different uh, topic areas to discuss. So each group is going to discuss a different topic area. And then there's also some people online that uh, we're going to give them free choice to choose which of the five areas they can discuss. Um, I'm going to, Paul, if it's okay for, for me to hand over to you to just explain the, <laughs> the introduction of um, the, 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 can we have the slide with the, the, uh, the topic areas? And uh, the focus here is about ideas and actions um, uh, that can be taken, I guess, now in the context of what Portugal could, could do here with um, uh, recycling and this, this whole area. What we're doing is we've got, we need five groups, so we're going to split, which is the biggest group, so we're going to split this group into two. Essentially, what I want you to do uh, for 20 minutes till half past is to think about, we want to get a project going on plastics recycling in Portugal. You heard from Adrian about the technology, you heard from Inez about the politics of this, you heard from me about various aspects. So uh, for, for those who understand, what we're talking about is critical success factors. So when you run a project like this, what, what are the critical things you have to handle? Because it isn't just, you can get one right, but if you don't think of the rest, you're in trouble. So we, we see at the moment five of those. So politics, Inez, very, very good on that. You know, politics is very important here. It's about government, local government, commission, and so on. You know, messages can get lost very easily. Key stakeholders. We talked about all the people who need to be involved to make this work. The brand owners, the plastics companies, the converters, you know, all, all of those people. They all need to work together here. Commercial. At the end of the day, this, is, this has to be a business. Maybe some of it is not for profit, but for example, you know, that there is a, a suggestion going around that collection, for example, and sorting of plastic could be not for profit. I don't know. Uh, you know, that, uh, you know we, could, we could see how that might work. Technical. One of the things we didn't talk about very much today is if you've got plastic, whatever it is, you know, if it's, a, if it's an iPhone or, or, or whatever, how do you know what type of plastic it is? Is it polyethylene? Is it polypropylene? Is it polystyrene? And so on. You know, hands up, anybody who knows. In fact, it's, it's all a mix. So what the Commission and 300 brand owners have been doing is coming up with something that's called the Holy Grail Project. Sorry, could we push the door back again as we did? There. Could we get the, just to cut out the noise there so people chat away. So, so this is called the Holy Grail Project, for those who, who know their Bible. And the idea is that every piece of plastic will have a digital watermark on it. So when it goes, it will have a high-speed camera and as it goes through the, the process on the conveyor belt, the camera will go click, 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 click. Oh, that's polyethylene, polypropylene. That's polyethylene, polystyrene. And so it will go into a separate stream in order to be processed, as Adrian was talking about. And this is almost finished. This has been a project that's been running for four years. You can look it up on the web. It's called the Holy Grail Project. Um, and then finally, obviously, finance. So, uh, what, which is the largest group here? I don't, say, at the back there. 
to reach out. So let's start with you. Would you like to be the politics team? You okay with that? Right? Would you like to think about what are the politics of all of this? What it, you know, um, how, you know, what, what do we have to get right in terms of politics in order to get a project going? For example, you know, does it matter whether the government believes in this or not? Does it matter whether the cities believe in it? That's the kind of, of thing that we need you to think about. So, second team here, key stakeholders. Who are the key companies, the businesses, the organisations, you know, NGOs, for example? You know, who are the people who need to be, because this, you know, everybody needs to come into this. I always, with a project, I always think about if you're coming down from a railway station and it's a rush hour and everybody is rushing up the platform to get that train to go home. And if one person comes down the middle, it's complete chaos. And all the people who are trying to get up get sort of knocked and so on. And if you don't get all the key stakeholders on board, that one stakeholder can be immensely disruptive. So I want that team to think about who needs to be involved, who needs to get on board with this. So this, this group, I'll put you in that group, if we split this group in half, so Adrian, two, two ladies there, and Richard, uh, the commercial group, how does, how does the commercial side of this work? And then if this half of the team here, if you could look at technical issues, and you can ask across to Adrian if you need to, uh, and then finally this group here, if you could think about finance. Does that, that make sense? Yeah. I, I, what, what, what I'd say is, this isn't, this isn't an examination, nobody's going to look stupid or anything like that. What is really always good about brainstorming like this is you get fresh new ideas. So, you know, discuss it, you know, say, build on each other's ideas, and then what we want is your best one or two ideas, and we'll then go with those and I think Moes is kindly volunteered to, uh, to write them up. And the guys online, if you could choose one topic and then discuss that between you, and then we can include what you're doing as well. So you could have a fight for 10 minutes about your topic and then five minutes for discussing it <laughs> or other ways. Is that all clear? Great, okay. Clock is now ticking and we'll finish in 15 <laughs> minutes or so. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Uh, now it's time to do a quick harvest of the to you, folks. two points that um, came out of your discussion in each group. I don't know if I can ask you here to start with the discussion we had around... Um, uh, no, actually, let's start here. We'll start with politics. Uh, I think, where was politics? Was that politics at the back? Yes, your politics, right? Okay, so let's start there. Uh, seeing it's top left here. I'm going to ask you, um, how did your discussion go? Do we have a spokesperson? Okay, so um, just, I mean, if you could, we, we're looking at the time. Uh, just, uh, if you could try and distill the one to two points that you came out of your discussion. If you need to explain a bit, that's fine as well. So first we had a really candid conversation and uh, we were really not technical but we were trying how can we improve the world and how can politics play a role in that. This was our initial mindset. Um, so the first thing was we started to discuss um, and to see that more than uh, putting penalties, politics should incentivize companies to change the way they work because penalties um, well, are penalties, so they are restrictive. Okay. They don't change things. You just do it because you have to do it. Otherwise, you, you have to pay a fine for that. So incentivizing was for us um, a better way of changing mindsets. Okay, incentives, not penalties. Exactly, and this was also a way not to um, impact small local companies that take longer to change and don't have necessarily the funds to pay the penalties, so thinking also on maintaining the local uh, network. 
Um, so this was the first thing we discussed. Uh, the second one was we tried to think both on the consumer and on the companies. And so on the consumers, we saw that governments could play a key role in uh, educating, in putting in place uh, educational uh, systems uh, for the future generations, creating new uh, roads in schools, not putting it on top of, but investing in people to navigate schools and show, I mean, have things in place like uh, gardens, um, compost, um, sustainable education for the future. So that's again, we are uh, investing in the future. And, um, and yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay, thank you. So incentives and, if I understand right, about education and in investing in people. Um, so I guess we'll fix up the notes as we go. But um, key stakeholders, was that your key stakeholders? So who's your spokesperson? Okay, so we take a few, but we can talk about uh, just two. Um, we have the poor work in general uh, that will uh, put the, the bottles or the plastic on the, the right places, and also on these uh, the local businesses like restaurants and uh, and cafes um, and the other. Uh, the government or local municipalities that will put incentives and uh, and put the the boxes where, where we put the, the plastics. So which group are we on? Okay, uh, I'm just checking. Sorry, I was just I was just catching up there. What? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, sorry. Could, could I have those <laughs> words of wisdom again? Yes. Yeah, you got, you've got an idiot here, you know? So we're on the second one, key stakeholders. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so we have several, so I'll put just two, the general public and the um, local businesses, and then the municipalities, the local municipalities or the government. Right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, so there was a combination there. It was, um, so have we got a second? So the general public and local businesses was one. I think local government was the second, right? Yeah. Local government was the second. Oh, oh I see. Right. Yeah. Local yeah. government was the second. Yeah. Right. Thank you. So uh, commercial, yes. That's over here. Um, so we actually have a, a point in common with politics. Uh, because we also discussed the incentives for companies. So instead of punishing them, uh, which was, we talked about it, but we changed it afterwards. Um, <laughs> so we think it's better to, uh, to have a positive uh, reinforcement on the companies uh, and people to do the right thing. And then we also talked about uh, communication, like clear communication to uh, the consumer because uh, as a lot of you know, sometimes people don't know what happens to the plastic, or it all gets mixed up, it doesn't have a point, so yeah, we chose clear communication and positive incentive. Could, so could you go back over the first question, for the first point again? I wasn't quite clear. Uh, it was positive reinforcement. Posi right, thank yes. you. For consumers and uh, companies. Ah, that was the bit I was yes. missing, great. <laughs> thank you. Now, I have to check. Is it technical here, was it? Who's your spokesperson? Okay, excuse me. So, we had two main ideas. The first one was to reallocate the real cost of the CO2 emissions, uh, like from the supermarket. So, the the cost would be just reallocate uh, to the supermarket and the second idea was to promote more investigation for the replacement of plastic bags 
for example, we fought on coconut uh, fiber bags, and those are, those are more or less the ideas. So just on the first Echo point, bags, yeah. on, uh, just to clarify, on the first point, your reallocation of the emissions, uh, was it a, a technical aspect to it there? Reallocate the costs of the CO2 emissions to the production of plastic bags. Okay. In order that we have the real uh, cost of those plastic bags, in order to think about the replacement yep. by another products that are not have so much impact in the okay. environment. Uh, and the second point, I'm looking at the, the note taking. Uh, it seems like there's a bit of a lag between these things. Yeah, so that's being uh, captured there. Um, so the last one now is finance. Thank you. Um, so we just had a last question or last point of discussion that came up while listening to everybody. The project, is it run by the government or is it a project from a private company? Question to uh, everyone. I guess, um, so the main assumption that we, we, we took as a baseline is that the project itself should be profitable because otherwise we would need huge marketing budget in order to make it run in a financially sustainable way in the long term. So the two points that we came up is how do we find cheap money? Um, we thought that dom donations would probably not be a good um, way of getting uh, our project financed because what came up was a lack of trust when it comes, to, not a lack of trust, but basically um, my new friend here said that in Portugal, um, within the tax scheme, people are, are already contributing towards recycling projects. So for her, it was weird to say I would donate extra money to a project if I know that I'm already paying a tax that might be contributing to this project. So there we probably come back to what was discussed initially with language and the, the problem of trust. So we dismissed this option with the donations. However, we could still use the donations to, uh, for example, fund other projects that ultimately contribute to our uh, plastics recycling project, such as educating children on how such projects could be run. So now <laughs> to the main points from the, well, if we, if we look at the macro perspective, um, we would try to find funds for, I mean, there's a lot of funds that are being given out uh, for startups, for young projects. So we would definitely tap into, into these type of funds and then also try to extract, attract external funds fundings from investors, but specifically look at investors that are thematically related to our project itself, whatever it may be, so that we can also have synergies coming out of this funding. I hope that... Okay, so uh, funding in the startup space as well as uh, uh, from external funders, right? Okay. Any comments, questions? Hmm. Anything surprising? Uh, we were surprised that we were all separated in different groups because ultimately it would be good to have each person of each one of these people or stakeholders sitting together in order to make the project run. And in the in the, in the answers or bullet points I think that everyone has given here, you can see, I mean, the incentives from the politics go with the finance uh, money that we want from you and so on, so it's all interlinked. Yeah, well, sorry, that, that was exactly what we wanted. But you, 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 start, you start, what we thought was, it's easier to start in a small group on one topic and now the real value is that we've got 10 brilliant ideas here uh, to take forward, let's have a general discussion, you know, and just open open forum for the last sort of 10 minutes or so, 
uh, of uh, you know, what, what you know, if, if, if you're in the, these areas, you know, what, 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 what jumps out at you? So anybody, just put your hand up and, and we'll, we'll, we'll capture the comments. Can I put my hand up? All right. Okay. <laughs> I like the question actually under finance that was about, is this a, a publicly funded um, project or is it a, a private initiative? I don't know if you have a view on that. What's the, what's the best way to approach this? Um, I don't know. It is. Could, you've been in government. What, how, how would you approach this? <laughs> That's not a fair did you like question. the way I did that? Did you like that? Okay. That's not a fair question. Um, well, I need to first. Um, I think it's it's important for us to be sure about the technical feasibility of of the project. Uh, there is a lot, uh, like I was talking to you before. <laughs> There has been a lot of discussion about the feasibility of chemical recycling as, as uh, indeed an option for um, contributing to closing the loop on, on plastics. So that's one thing that we need to really be sure of. Um, I know, like I said before, this is uh, something that is being discussed on the EU level. I would probably check back with, with the Commission, with GRC, for example, yeah. to understand, okay, what is the state of art in terms of, of this type of, of technology? Um, is it feasible for us to, because as you know, there are a lot of talks about yeah. CCS and stuff like that, so I need to be sure of, of, of it as a tech, technically wise. In terms of, ex of incentives, I am a person that um, has been aware that for many years we have looked into incentives um, as a way to push forward uh, this type of technologies and in some instances it has worked. Uh, for instance, look at, at the issue with renewable energy without uh, public support in the beginning of their their, gro their growth, it wouldn't be possible for them to penetrate the market as they did. Mm. But the issue is, you have to know when to stop. Yes. And sometimes you don't stop. For example, you have 500 billion uh, US dollars a year given as incentives for the fossil fuel companies. So we need to strike a balance between incentives, the things that we want to, to, to allow uh, uh, to become uh, real and, and operative in a market, but we also have, we have to have the other side. We have to have penalties for those that do not comply with that, with that reasoning. Um, and that is a very difficult balance to achieve. It's very difficult to convince a policymaker that you have to have both, because there is always the, the approach of, no, we need to be proactive, we need to be positive-driven, positive uh, you only convince, you know, you only catch flies with honey, not with vinegar. Um, but I think that if we need to be faster in, in our approach to, to green transformation, um, we have passed the, the phase where we, ne we need to have a slow adoption. That's not possible. We need to, have much, we to be much, more, much quicker. And to be much quicker, we have to have incentives, yes, but we, all, we also have to have strong penalties. Otherwise, so I was surprised to only see incentives like support training, incentives for companies to invest, all good, but it also needs to have some sort of either cap uh, obligation, for instance, in terms of recycle, uh, re, uh, recycling materials uptake in products like mm -hmm what they did with the PET bottles, but did it 
but to do it across the board in particular products. So that needs to be also on the table. That's my approach to, to it. Hmm. I almost think that's the brilliant summary, but let's, but please. I have a question. Uh, do you think governments are currently penalizing uh, or managing the balance between the incentives and the, the penalties hard enough in order for us to not stay in that phase of like, oh, small, slow adaptation, but get like, to the next gear and solve the issue? Um, it depends on, the, on the, the area that you're working on. There are areas where it is drastically, penalties are drastically needed in order to push the market to respond. Um, I, was, I was in the old debacle about the, the landfill tax. Um, it was an issue. Uh, there was a strong push for raising the landfill tax um, and then for, for a while it was a push and all we need to have a higher, higher, higher and then when people started to understand well but this will all trickle down to the consumer, to the citizen and this will penalize the citizen because we haven't invested in uh, separate collection uh, closer to the citizen because we took we, we had a 10 year gap of investing that is missing uh, and that was enough for people to, no, 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 we don't need to, to raise that so much. It's bad for the citizen. They're going to pay more. When, it's, when, when the objective is to force the market to respond with the necessary measures, because they are going to be an obligation soon, right from the start. We don't have to, we are not going to wait for them to do it. It needs to happen now. It needs, you need to have organic waste collection, you need to have a more a closer a separation to the citizen, you need to implement those things, you need to separate the, the waste tariff from water consumption, which is still going on up to this day. That's one of the first things that needs to go for people to understand that the, the, the amount of waste they produce has a direct link with how much they pay in the end. The, the, the deduction of recyclables, the, your effort in recycling has to be translated into the tariff. All those things needed to happen. Um, and so that is why where I say that in certain instances, the pen, penalizing a particular action, we are not looking for penalizing the consumer, we are looking for penalize uh, materials that are wasted that shouldn't be wasted, shouldn't be, have been wasted, if the right technologies and the right practices were already implemented, which they are not. So this is sort of to, to bring the, 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 the market forward. Um, but I understand that in some cases, it will be poorly understood by the public in general, um, that these taxes, these, these le levies, you, you can uh, name uh, whatever, um, can be perceived as something that we are moving towards the consumer when in, in fact we are trying to shape the market in order to respond to that objective. Um, it all comes down, it all boils down to how much people are willing to understand the, the policy and to how much business, and that is my cap right now, uh, I took the policy cap and put the business cap on, um, how much business is willing to assume its responsibility in that process. Because it's, we are long past the phase where you can push that responsibility to the consumer and say, you're not doing enough. Um, now it, business has to step up and provide the, the evidence that they can do more. And people are asking it. The, the recent Eurobarometer survey on green transition uh, if you compare the answers from Portuguese people with the EU average, hmm. um, by far Portuguese, say, Portuguese people are saying business need to do more. Hmm. Much more than government, much more than the EU, 
It's business that needs to show up and do. Um, so there's a clear, there's a clear signal that if people are demanding this, hmm. it will soon translate into policy by the European Commission. So if the industry does not accept that needs that it needs to transform its business model, its production process, its all, its strategy, uh, pretty soon they will be complied to through regulation, through hmm. taxation, whatever. That's my perspective. Thank you very much. I'm thinking uh, to ask Adrian for a last word. I, I think, look, I mean, this whole journey has really started with the consumer. Um, and, and go back to Paul's opening words about Blue Planet and, uh, you know, seeing the impact of plastic in the oceans. And, you know, it's a triumph, really, of social media that actually the masses have risen up and got to the point where uh, the legislators now know they've got to do something, otherwise they don't have a job. And I would say, you know, go to public power. Um, that has been a tremendous, you know, initiator of a journey. Um, and so in a funny little way, in terms of who should actually own a facility, you know, I, I, and, and I'm just, just making this up at the moment, so good caveats uh, abound, wouldn't it be great if there was a cooperative that actually it was a community-owned initiative so it wasn't a somebody's imposing something in my backyard. This is actually something that a district wants to have because people want to see and be part of that journey. It is really interesting to see. Um, I, I was involved in, I'm a, I'm quite a lot involved in wind turbines these days, um, but, but the first wind turbine commercially put up in, in uh, the UK was in about 1968 um, by a farm in, in uh, Yorkshire. Um, and everybody hated the turbine. And the farmer was always battling with the local community. So in the end, he sold the turbine to the local community to a cooperative. Now the community loves it um, because they get cheap electricity. And all of a sudden, people are really connected to this turbine because they now actually want to charge everything up when the wind is blowing. And they want to just pull everything out of the wall when the wind is not blowing. And they feel much more engaged with where do their electrons come. And I sometimes feel that with waste. You put it in a bin, you have absolutely no idea where it's going to go. But actually, wouldn't it be great if the community was actually part of, actually, this is our facility, and we know exactly what happens to our waste. We know how it gets recycled, and therefore, we're engaged with it. That's one thing. If you think about nascent industries, though, and, and, and we've just been talking about the incentives for um, renewable electricity, and I think they've played an absolutely fantastic uh, role where contracts for difference or feed-in tariffs, whatever you want to call them for a moment, they took an industry that was not um, cost-effective, and it couldn't compete with the installed capacity, and it gave it a bit of a boost. What's really interesting now that wind and solar are the lowest cost forms of electricity, bar none. So over the last nine, ten years, they've come from being the most expensive way of making electricity, and they've come right the way down through the ranks. So you go, coal is still the same, gas is still the same, nuclear is ever getting more expensive. But actually, wind and solar have just come right down. And so, it, bizarrely, you know, when actually you look at incentives, the wind industry are now paying back in to keep the subsidies going on the fossils, which doesn't make any sense. But that's where policy needs to... So, I think actually making sure that the politics actually does incentivize um, is, is actually essential to actually make the economics of this work, because at this point in time, yes, the economics just about work, but, but they really need a bit of a boost to make sure that you're going to get those ESG type investors that the finance group was talking about here, to get those to the party is going to need that type of boost to a nascent industry. But it's not that something that has to be subsidized for years and years and years. You know, my expectation here is it'll follow exactly like photovoltaics. Ten years later, it'll be everybody wants to do it because it makes financial sense. The joy here is an opportunity for the Portugal to do it on a, a scale which actually allows everybody else in Europe to say, that's how you do it. Now, that's the model that we want to adopt. Um, and, and, and what a joy that would be. Thank you. Just, just, just one point, which in Portugal, um, uh, unfortunately, I, I have some examples where we have been put forests to install 
uh, solar panels. So uh, it's it's quite important to have an integrative uh, mm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. approach on this in order that uh, yeah. we are not changing. But, so uh, my suggestion, yeah. because we're a little bit over time now, is that after this uh, there is uh, coffee and uh, time for networking and mingle. So let's, let's take this into the, the, yeah. the, the break so we can wrap everything up. I'll give the last word to you. But I think the key, key public, or general public has got to be one of the key stakeholders in here. It has to be that it works with the community. I agree entirely. Well, I, all I really want to do is to thank everyone for staying. I mean, it's, you know, if you could, would have said sort of 10 years ago that you would all have given up an afternoon to come and talk about plastics, you know, I'm not sure many people would have put their hands up. So, uh, and, you know, it, it is a complicated issue, and your point is, is exactly right, that we do need to think through the implications of all of this. Uh, and that's, I think, Energy's point about dialogue. And, you know, if, if we get into a point where industry is fighting for this, and consumers are fighting for that, and brand owners and so on, we don't get anywhere. We've somehow got to get to a, you know, what I was talking about, a new business model. Uh, you know, when I, when I was, was, was young, the age of some, some of you here, globalization was just starting. And so, I, you know, I went to, you know, my, my second job uh, was to Houston in Texas. And my younger son was born a Texan. Poor chap, but he survived. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I began to run global businesses, and we had the IT to do all that. And so my, my future was, was all bound up with this globalization. And now what we're seeing is globalization has come to an end. We're not doing that anymore. And so the opportunity for everyone in this room, particularly the younger people, is around a more local to local business, which does require getting involved with the local community, getting involved with the local politics. But actually, one thing I've learned over the years is you mustn't allow the best to become the enemy of the good enough. Hmm. You can always stop progress by saying, oh, but that's not taking account of this. Yeah, I know. But the 80-20 rule is really important. Does 80% of this look right? Fine. Let's get going on that and let's sort out the other 20. Because mm. if we try and get perfection, put it another way, when I started work, our boss told all the young graduates, he said, look, if you have to make 10 decisions, make 10 decisions. Probably three or four of them will be wrong. But it doesn't matter because you'll have a chance to correct it. But if you sit there trying to get it absolutely perfect, you can't because you don't know enough. You learn by doing. So I, I was really inspired by what everybody has, has done today. I mean, your group has just come together like this, and we've actually got together you know, a really sensible list of areas to move forward. And I hope that you, know, you will uh, email the, the organizers or text them or whatever uh, with, with new ideas. But uh, thank you all very much indeed. It's been a fantastic afternoon.